Hey there friends, Nibs again, out here in the garage tonight, doing a little bit of goofing around. It is a uh, rainy and nasty day out today. Really wanted to get my lawn mowed, but it's pretty wet, so probably not going to get that done either. But I wanted to get out here and do a little bit of plinking. And I got a couple of guns that were sent over or brought to me, or however you want to say it. Uh, a couple of them were mailed into me, a couple of them were brought to me at the Bowensville Gun Show. But uh, I wanted to do a little head-to-head -head challenge between these two guys' pistols, just to have some fun. Uh, they're both uh, they're both plinking pistols. They're not target pistols by any means. Uh, but uh, I have a couple of three-inch splatter bursts across the garage here, and we're just going to shoot a couple of five-shot groups and see which one actually gives me the better group or the better score or whatever you want to say. So the first one is a really really cool gun that. I didn't even know about it until I saw it when Randy brought this and gave it to me to fix for him. This is a FB Record Jumbo is the model. And I said it before and I'll say it again. It's kind of funny. They have two different ones. The other one's I believe called a Champion. And it is like three or four inches bigger overall than this one. It's just a much larger gun. It has basically the same power plant as this one just a much it's got a lo longer power plant but the same oval shaped power plant uses the same seal but uh, they call this one the jumbo and they call the bigger one the champion so <laughs> it's very interesting and then uh, so these were made between like 1984 and 1997 um, this one says it was made in West Germany so more than likely it was made 1989 or older because uh, you know, we know our history, the fall of the Berlin Wall, <clears throat> reunification of Germany happened in 1989. So, uh, but we're going to be putting it up against uh, this cool old timer. This one's a little bit older, not too much older though. Uh, this is a 1970 vintage Benjamin Model 132. Really cool with the nickel uh, plating. I don't know if that was on all of these at this period uh, of the production. But I do have an older 137 that is uh, looks like it used to be colored black, but that's pretty well worn off, and it's now in just just brass. And then this one uh, is an even newer production one. This one's 1978, and that one also looks like it used to be brass and is now pretty much all brass, <laughs> or it was black. And is now all bra brass but we're going to go ahead and shoot this one actually came in just a day or two after the fb record so technically this one will go first uh the way I, that's the way i work it the newest one into the garage shoots first but let's go ahead and get uh, five shots out and see what we can do i've uh i've really not zeroed either one of these i've just shot at cans with them so far so I really have no idea uh, how this is going to work out. We'll shoot, uh, uh, I really like to shoot these for score but if it just works out where one shooting you know all the pellets in a small area but off to the left or right uh, I'll, I'll go by group size or something like that instead but uh, let's go ahead and uh, see what we can do. All right, that's not bad to start off with. <laughs> so this one's 22 caliber. I'm shooting this with Crossman Premier Hollow Points. Almost the same hole. That one looked like it was a nine. The first one was a 10. Seems like these guys, these will go up per the manual or the old written information I could find about these. They'll go up to eight pumps. All right. But uh, they, they seem to like six pumps the best. 
they're like their big brothers the Benjamin and Sheridan rifles of this day they're very they get very tough to to pump up that little bitty pump arm is pretty hard to move around Ooh, pulled that one a little off to the left all right one more I overcorrect or I overcorrected. <laughs> Tried to correct and overcorrect. That's what I meant to say. So now this one is a 177 caliber, so I'm going to shoot this one with the uh, Benjamin single die pellets here. Pretty close to Crossman from Rare Hollow Point. <clears throat> this one <laughs> has a much shorter sight radius. It's a lot more difficult for me to shoot it accurately <laughs> I say this one's really pretty cool so the you pull this cocking lever up top and it actually pulls the spring full or pulls the the pistons in the rear here and it pulls the piston backwards or towards the front and sets the sear and when you close this down, the back side of this little uh, cocking arm actually is what seals the chamber off because the piston's going to fly backwards and the air's got to make a 90 degree turn and then go down the barrel. The barrel stops way back here, makes a 90 degree turn and then pushes the pellet out. So the barrel is the full length of this, uh, chamber, this top assembly here. So pretty cool, uh, pretty cool design. Oop, that one flew right up off the <laughs> right up off the paper. That's not good. The sights are the sights are difficult on this this little guy though. That's better. Maybe I'll give it a mulligan. <laughs> that was probably me uh, just. The black sight, I, I haven't put the orange paint on like I do with my own guns on either one of these really, but that one is a nickel plated front sight, so it was a lot easier to see. This one's black on black on black. Very difficult to, uh, very difficult to see. Oh. Sear did not want to set. That's not good. Another zero. <laughs>Alrighty, due to some technical difficulties, uh, I actually noticed that while I was shooting the record uh, with those Benjamin pellets, they were actually falling down inside the barrel quite a bit, and uh, that was really causing some real inconsistencies as far as shot placement goes. Uh, so I stopped the camera downrange uh, and uh, start. I want to start over again with the record. I won't even show you the, what it did with the with the Benjamins, but uh, I have shot a couple of practice shots, and I think it's going to be a lot better. I found some really nice wad cutters that uh, just just go into the back of the barrel and then stop uh, on every one of them. So we're going to shoot uh, five new shots for this guy. And uh, if it gets any zeros now, it's all on its own. Uh, I shot uh, like seven with the with the uh, Benjamins. I shot it's like seven pellets. Three of them were zeros. See them sights. All right, that's 
up high, but it's in scoring. Four. We're starting to get the hang of it. So these are uh, Ile Ventus. Really nice match grade pellets. And uh, I think they got a, just a little bit bigger head size because they stop nice and tight right in the back of the chamber on this guy. All right. Looks like I finally got it figured out. <laughs> but. Uh, all right, now let me grab them targets. I'll add those up, and uh, we'll see how I did. I think the uh, I think the Benjamin took it, but uh, I had been shooting that one a little bit more, and uh, seemed just seemed to be right on the money, right out of the right out of the gate for me. So I didn't have to fight with it as much. Stand by. All righty, I am back, and uh, after a little bit of a stutter step with the record, um, we uh, actually have a really good result. And uh, what I came up with, uh, unfortunately, I, I made the mistake. <clears throat> Alrighty, I am back, and uh, we are uh, <laughs> we got some good results now. So uh, I uh, had started out with the record shooting the Benjamin single dies, and they were just not really great head sized for that gun, and they were falling about an inch down inside the barrel. Um, I started over again with some Ely Ventus wide cutter pellets. Uh, they must have a little bit bigger head size and they were nice and snug uh, right in the back of the barrel. Uh, so they were starting out from the same starting point every time. Um, and what I ended up with was a really good result. Uh, very happy with it. Um, so the uh, first target, and I'll put a picture of the target here. Um, I actually put the paster, uh, I put the new splatter burst over top of the, when I restarted with the record, I put the splatter burst for over top of the one for the Benjamin. So I don't have that here to show you. Uh, I had to use the downrange footage to get my scoring. <clears throat> but the Benjamin actually shot uh, two tens. First two shots were tens and then uh, three nines. Uh, so it had a nice 47. So it did have one X, which means one of those shots was in that red dot in the center. That's like the X-ring tiebreaker on uh, uh, any competition you do. There will always be a little X-ring, uh, a little bit smaller than the regular 10 ring. The record did really good. <clears throat> First shot was a 9. Second shot was an 8, just about a 0, almost a 0, but it did crack the edge of the target. And then the last three shots were actually tens. Now the none of those tens actually touched the one X ring, but the record also had a 47. So the tiebreaker always goes to the one with the most X rings. The Benjamin had uh, one one X or one X ring, so it won uh, with the tiebreaker. So there you go. I had 47 and 47 with one X for the Benjamin. But uh, that's a really cool head-to-head. -head. A lot of fun. <laughs> I really, I really do enjoy. I enjoy fixing these guys up, and then I enjoy being able to to play with them for a little while. Uh, it's like grandkids; you can play with them for a little while and then send them back to their parents. <laughs> but uh, there you go. That's uh, really cool. Cool Benjamin. Cool FB record. And uh, I'd say I'm the winner. Hope you guys liked the video. Till next time, have a great day.